Hello and welcome to the Premier League Proven Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff, with my brother here and co-host, Kevin. Say hey to the people. Hey, it's nice to be here. Uh, This is the inaugural episode of a podcast that we hope will be there for you for a long time. We are, as you can tell, obviously not born in the UK. And despite that flaw, we've been following the Premier League for a long time now. If you're an American, you're into sports or you're just into soccer, you've probably heard about the Premier League pretty often. Uh, you probably heard the name Manchester United, Liverpool, Chelsea, even if you've never watched the game. And every four years, uh, you've probably heard the World Cup too. Um, and if you've been watching the World Cup, if you've heard about soccer, you understand that this is uh, pretty much the world's game. And you might have been thinking that whole time, Maybe that you want to get into it. But as an American, I think that can be pretty challenging sometimes because I think the reason that a lot of us get into football and baseball and hockey and basketball growing up is because, A, our parents followed it or we're from a town that has a team. And obviously, if you live in the States, you're not going to have a a Premier League team that whose stadium is right beside you. So at the end of the day, this podcast right here is perfect if you want to get started with the Premier League. And if especially if you don't know where to start, who to support, how it all works, we're going to give you all the information you need to pick a team, get started, fall in love with this game, and follow it for the rest of your life, uh, for better or for worse, from an emotional standpoint. Uh, So that's our first goal, is to make sure that you feel comfortable picking a team, get involved. Now is a great time to follow, because as we're recording this, it's the end of July in 2023, and the Premier League season is weeks away. This is the perfect time to get into this sport. And our second goal is to have a community where everyone can enjoy the Premier League together. Uh, We hope to have an online group that makes it easy to follow the Premier League, people that can chat, get to know each other, and see what we all think about what is probably the best league in all the world. So if you listen to this podcast, we promise that you'll have everything you need to follow the game, pick a team, and change your sports watching life forever. Now is an incredible time. Premier League is extremely competitive. It's likely the strongest league in the world, and it's accessible in the U.S. Everything you need right now is here. Kevin, why should the people like soccer in the first place? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think there's a few things I personally enjoy more than, you know, Saturday or Sunday morning is, you know, waking up, you get a nice cup of coffee, maybe you make some breakfast, and you, you turn on your, your favorite team, and you're kind of locked in for, for two hours for better or worse. And I think it's just a little bit different, at least if you're on the East Coast side of the house. You're not waiting till the end of the day. You're not waiting till late night games. It's kind of the start of your day, and you can kind of follow that through. But I think what separates soccer for, for me and why I like it a little bit more than probably a lot of American sports, it's just not a binary league. And kind of what I mean by that is, you know, you're watching the NFL, and, you know, one team has a good season, and then you have 31 losers. That's kind of disheartening, especially if you're a, let's say you're a Cardinals fan right now. You know that you're going to be in a rebuild probably for the next five or so years. Probably by week four, you're like, yep, this season's over. Now I have to wait another 11 months until you know I can roll the dice again and see if the Cardinals kind of catch fire and get lucky. But the lovely thing about the Premier League is all the teams have something to play for. And I mean, I would argue that the bottom half of the teams or the bottom of the league have more to play for than the top teams, just because there is promotion and relegation. You know, there's an incentive system that you cannot just suck for luck. You cannot just tank your season and say, hey, we're going to go for, for a rebuild here. Every season matters. Every game matters. And it's just really unique compared to a lot of American sports. Yeah, and I think uh, the first thing, for the West Coasters, you'll have to get up a little bit earlier than the East Coasters. But, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and just if you're unaware, England is about five hours ahead on the East Coast and about eight hours for the West. And uh, obviously, different amounts of time if you're in between. The Premier League, like you said, is probably the most emotional sport, or really just soccer in general, but the Premier League, I think, is the most accessible for us that speak English because every single game matters. And just like you said, I think that comes from the entire system of promotion and relegation. And so if you're not familiar, we will get into this a little bit more, 
but the entire league is set up so that the worst teams in every league end up dropping down a division. So you actually lose your right to play in the top league. So you can go from a Premier League team to the second and third division if you have a really bad season. Three out of the 20 teams, so literally 15% of the teams every single season, are relegated, taken out of the league for the next year. And it's not just the promotion and relegation aspect that makes this so crazy of a sport to follow. This we'll get into. You don't have to know everything about this. When we throw around words like the Champions League and the League Cup and the Conference League and the Europa League, all of these things get confusing. You're not just fighting to win the league. You're also fighting for the top four possibly soon the top five. You're fighting for places so that you can play in Europe next season. And all of these things basically mean the future of your club is up for grabs in every single game. No matter how bad the team you're playing, no matter how small of a game, how big of a game, every single point that you get is incredibly important. And what that means for your emotional state is that you will never watch a game where it just doesn't mean anything, where it's meaningless. And that's why I think a big reason why everybody loves this sport is because every goal, every minute is just so damn important. Yeah, I think you said it right. All the teams have a little bit of a different goal. Probably any sport, there's probably 10 to 15% of the league that has a real shot at you know winning whatever championship there may be for, for any given season. Of course, there's some outliers that kind of sneak in there. But the fun thing about soccer is, you know, if you're one of the worst teams, your goal isn't to win that season. Your goal is just to stay up and keep fighting. You know, a lot of teams, they're just looking to sneak in and be above average for the year. They're not looking to necessarily win the entire year. And they'll call it a successful year if they finish in sixth or seventh place. So, you know, not just one team is having you know something to celebrate. There's a lot of people out there that are having things to celebrate. I think the the other thing, uh, you know, I hear some of my American friends who are just getting into soccer that, you know, may not have a background, you know, they complain a little bit about not having a playoff system. And I think like you talked about, there are playoff-esque competitions. And again, we'll get into more of that in some future episodes. The Premier League is the most fair season. It's one game at home, one game away, and you play every single team in the league at the end of the day, whoever has the most points, so three for a win, one for a uh, draw, and zero for a loss, whoever has the most points wins the league. There's no strength of schedule. You know, As we're recording this right now, if you're a baseball fan and you're thinking, hey, the AL East is the best division in all of baseball, but guess what? They all have to play each other you know, disproportionate amount of time. There's no strength of schedule as far as you know, divisions or you know, I have two games against this guy. Hey, everybody has the same odds to, to play everything. So it just makes it really come out with who is the best, who's consistently the best team for the season. Yeah, and I think as the sport gets bigger, you know, I think Arsenal, if you look, they're one of the big teams in soccer. 20% of their revenue actually, of their commercial revenue actually comes from the United States. So I think every single year, the game is growing, not just in England, not just in other countries, but also in America. And obviously we have the MLS too, which is a great league, but the Premier League is just the best league. And you have some people arguing about La Liga, but the Premier League is as of this moment, definitely the richest and probably the best league in the world in terms of soccer. Uh, But Kevin, I think one thing that you've always really liked is uh, the Premier League liking soccer obviously can connect you with everyone across the world. Yeah, it's like a really unique thing. Um, I I think it's not just people who are into sports. There's so many documentaries out there, whether it's Ryan Reynolds, Welcome to Wrexham, or any of Ted Lasso, if you start following that stuff. But the one that I love, and it's also an American, they have some football teams that kind of go along with this. It's Amazon's All or Nothing. And watching that from a soccer team perspective was just mind blowing. You're, you're seeing a manager, uh, giving away one of the seasons here, but you're seeing a manager who's speaking, I wouldn't say perfect English. He's speaking heavily accented English because obviously English is not his first language. And he is trying to give a halftime talk to give tactics and to rile up the troops before they go out there in a second half. And you see guys from probably 10 different countries, at least some of them don't even actually speak English. And they're just kind of following along and nodding along as this guy who is trying to motivate them in a different language to go out there 
and the help fans from all over the world kind of come together and pull together for something. So it's like a very unique thing. It's not um, just something uh, as far as, hey, you know, I'm from this town or this state. It's, hey, I might not even speak the same language, but we're going to go out there together and uh, try to win this game. And I think we've both had experiences where we've interacted with people from other countries, you know, from whether that's Europe, Africa, Asia, South America, anywhere really that you can think of people that, you know, may not be from America, but the way that you can connect with people all across the world is to know about soccer. I think, Kevin, you had an interesting talk about somebody when a guy from Belgium was so happy that you just knew this guy, Nasser Chadley, who's just this random player uh, that is, you know, he's a good, decent player back in the day, but nothing really to, to write home about. Not somebody that anybody that doesn't follow the sport closely would know about. And the fact that you were able to know who that is, you were able to connect. And I think it's it's the universal language is something that you like to say. And if you know something about soccer, if you follow soccer, this is something that will follow you, will help you, and just be be a part of a, a sport, a league, and a team that has a universal fan base, that has people across the world internationally that just says something about how special this game is. Yeah, I mean, my senior year of high school, we had a, a foreign exchange student from Norway, and go figure, he played soccer and was, was pretty good at it. But I remember distinctively, you know, you were giving us a ride somewhere, and you... Uh, brought up the name Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and you could see him almost light up and calm down. He's like, oh, wow, like, you know, a Norwegian player like that is just such an instant connection. And it was just such a cool bonding from, you know, two people from different cultures, but you have kind of a, a shared language to, to talk about something they love. And all right, enough. If you've already clicked on this podcast, it's probably because you're already interested in soccer to begin with. So I don't think we need to keep pitching you. But just rest assured that you made the right decision. If you want to start following the game or even if you've already been following the game for a long time and are just looking for a place to kind of call home, follow along with, you've come to the right spot. So the first things first, obviously, a lot of us, I think, that are listening to this podcast probably going to be in the States. It's a little bit confusing in terms of how to watch the game here. Basically, underlying, you need NBC and USA. If you want to watch all the games, you need NBC and USA, and you need Peacock. With those two things, you can essentially watch every game that comes up during the entire Premier League season. The Premier League season, just so you know, is generally in August to May ordeal. Uh, So it, it goes on for 10 months out of the year. So honestly, this is not a sport like football or something where you only follow it basically August to January and then most of the rest of the year is waiting for the draft. This is a sport that basically accompanies you on every Saturday for the rest of your year. And that's part of the, what makes it incredible. And the entire league um, is set up so that there's 20 teams in the Premier League. We'll give you everything you need to know so that you can follow. Whether or not you've only know teams based on FIFA, whether or not you just heard st- people talking on Sports Center or ESPN or just heard the random names of teams on the internet, we're going to give you everything you need to know to pick a great team that fits your personality, fits what you want to get out of watching soccer, and a team that you're going to follow for the rest of your life. And so what we're going to do over the next few episodes is first give you the entire history of the Premier League so that you have the context of where we've come from, where the Premier League and all of its teams have kind of ended up to start this 2023-2024 season. And for a lot of you guys that are just getting into the sport, people in in the U.S. tend to follow the bigger teams. That's kind of what we would call the top seven, which would be the top seven biggest clubs obviously we very much support anybody that wants to kind of follow a smaller club but you have to be the right kind of person for that because it can be a little bit tough for these teams that if they are at risk of getting relegated in the next three four five years they fall into obscurity pretty quickly it can be really hard if you get relegated to get promoted again and it's a lot harder to follow the championship which is the second level underneath the premier league from the united states and so our recommendation, especially if you're really new, if you really just want a team to to kind of follow and know that they're going to be around for uh, the rest of your watching career, most likely at least, you can always get relegated. Uh, 
then we'd probably recommend that you take one of these big teams. We're going to go through everything that you need to know so that you can pawn yourself off as an expert in these teams just by listening to the podcast. You're going to get the history of the club, players to watch, what to expect from the season, and we'll introduce what we like to call the hope to heartbreak scale, which is just critical because this game is mostly about heartbreak. Unless you pick Manchester City, then, well, you're just kind of a terrible person. So we're going to give you everything you need to know, and uh, you pick the right place to start following the, uh, the Premier League. You pick the right time to start following the Premier League. We are just so happy to have you here. Please let reach out to us. Let us know what questions you have. Let us know things that you want to learn about the Premier League, things that you don't quite understand about the Premier League. We'll go through everything that you need to know. And welcome. Thank you for coming to the Premier League Proven Podcast. I'm Jeff. This is my brother, Kevin. And we're just so happy to have you here. Signing off.